Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. A wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at ozarkfolkcenter.com. And by Stone Bank, a community bank supporting entrepreneurs and farmers nationwide with loans guaranteed by the USDA, SBA, and Farm Services Agency. Learn more at stonebank.com. And the Arkansas Arts Council, empowering the arts for the benefit of all Arkansans. On the web at arkansasarts.org. <laughs> Howdy, folks. This is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. This week, we'll be hearing from bluegrass superstar, television personality, and founder of the legendary bluegrass group, The Dillards, Rodney Dillard, recorded live at the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. Our producer, Jeff Glover, has found a recording of Ozark Originals' Pam and Gene Simmons, and Brooks Blevins will continue his history of Branson, Missouri. That's this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. I don't know about you, but my first introduction to bluegrass music was as a child when I first heard a group called The Darlings on The Andy Griffith Show. I didn't know it then, but The Darlings were actually a band called The Dillards from Salem, Missouri. Founded by this week's featured guest, Rodney Dillard, The Dillards have had a long and successful music career. It's going to be one of those nights, folks. (laughs) We, on The Andy Griffith Show, would come into town, Andy would walk up to the truck, and he'd say to our, bo- our pa, the boys are all keyed up. <laughs> and they'd put the kids, this is what we did, play a little music, but this is the big thing we did, I can't believe it. Uh, they put the camera on us, and we would give this look. May I show you that look one more time? <laughs> You're way too kind. Or I'm going to do my best. I would like for you to be involved in this. If you would say, on the count of three, the boys are all keyed up, I'll do my best to represent the rest of the family. Of course, they've all passed, and I don't want to impose on them for them to come up and try to do it now. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was the chicken. Uh, so, at the count of three. One, two, three, the boys. <laughs> Isn't that a legacy to leave your grandkid? One time our son came running into his mom in the kitchen and said, hey, daddy's on another one of those gray shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, if it's okay with you, we're not just gonna stand there and play a bunch of music and say, thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you very much to do the next song. What I would like to do is just give you an idea of what it was like being in Mayberry, the, what I call the real Mayberry, out there with Andy and everybody doing those shows. And uh, if it's okay with you, as we go along, I'll kind of tell you how things develop. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. We're going to start off with a song here about the Darling Boys. And uh, we wrote this several years ago because we wanted to give the Darlings more history than what they had on the show. So we wrote this song about the Darling Boys and actually got nominated for a Grammy. <laughs> Weird. But anyway, I thought, what could we call this that would be real clever and just catch people and get it played on the radio? Came up with a real clever idea. It's called <laughs> The Darling Boys. Way, way in the middle of a mountainside where the red and the gray squirrels play. And the sound of the fiddle when the old man died was to carry the soul away. Some boys hammered on a steel all day and some put a furrow in the ground. Nobody did like the darling boys when the fiddle and the bull came down. When the fiddle and the bull came down. Oh, the darling boys, they all rest funny and the darling boys talk real slow. Nobody did like the darling boys when it came to the old banjo. When it came to the old banjo. Town where the steeple stand up high. They paid by the gallon and the boys came down from Mayberry Town was dry. Darling. 
darling boys had traps on the river and the darling boys made shine in the night. Nobody did like the darling boys when the time of the moon was right. When the time of the moon was right. Oh, the darling boys, they all dress funny and the darling boys talk real so. Nobody did like the darling boys when it came to the old banjo. When it came to the old banjo. Oh, the darling boys, they all dress funny and the darling boys talk real so. Nobody did it like the darling boys when it came to the old banjo. When it came to the old banjo. Well, I, to do that show, there's, these songs came about in different ways, and I'd like to do this next song about, uh, well, I'll tell you the situation. I'll, I'll just explain the scene for you. We're in there getting made up for this show. We, we'd come in at 6 o'clock so we could look like that. <laughs> I didn't have to come in early. And we were sitting there, and Andy was getting all made up and stuff. And I was just sitting there with the guitar. Cause we hung out. It was like a family. And Andy just loved music, and he loved bluegrass. And uh, I started doing noodling around doing this. And my brother, at the time, as we usually did, just picked up on it and did this. And he said, what is that? And my brother said, I don't know. And he said, we'll do it on the next show, which tickled us because we didn't know we were going to do another show. And I'm sure a lot of folks have heard this all over the country. It's called Doug's Tune.
<laughs> there was uh, one song that we did. We got out there. We left home. Not too far from where you all live. Anybody know where Dent County, Missouri is? Anybody know where Missouri is? <laughs> well, I came from a little farm down there that's been in the family since 1865. And for some reason, we decided, my brother and I, to go somewhere and play music, because that's what we love to do. I grew up at, with it with my family. So we headed for L.A. And uh, we had a 55 Cadillac and a one-wheel trailer and then a turkey that Mother had made for us for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and uh, it took us three months to get to, to L.A. And we'd forgotten we had the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's just the way L.A. smelled. <laughs> But now that's the way San Francisco smells. <laughs> oh, anybody from California? Oh, good. Get in real trouble. But so we were out there for a little while after we got the show and got really homesick and decided to write a song about home. And uh, it's very interesting how that works when you grow up and you come. How many of you grew up on a farm or grew up in a, in a small house in a town and you came back years later and everything looked smaller? That ever happened to you? The stairs don't look quite as high. Well, that's the way we felt about it when we wrote this song. I'm going to do it for you now. It's called The Old Home Place. And the fox hunt I blew his horn I fell in love with the girl in the town I thought that she would be true I went away to Charlottesville To work in a sawmill crew What had they done with the old home place? Why did it tear down? And why? plow in the field and look for a job in the town. The girl ran off with somebody else. The taverns took my pay. Before they took it away As geese fly south and the wind grows cold As I stand here and hang my head I've lost my love, I've lost my home And now I wish that I were dead What have they done with the old home place? Very welcome. Thank you for sitting through it. <laughs> oh, my. Well, I'm trying to figure out what I would do now. Uh, oh, I know what I want to do. Uh, any of y'all down here know anything about moonshine whiskey? Oh, you do? Well, see me after the show. Gosh, from the response there, I didn't think we had too many Baptists in the audience. Yeah, I'm just kidding, Baptist. They're good folks. Uh, so, well, we made this song up about a guy in our hometown who made moonshine whiskey for 
Oh, about 25 years. And he never got caught, never went to jail, and everybody knew he was making it. And we thought it would be really great to write a song. <laughs> and this thing ended up, I think even Grandpa Jones did it once. And uh, you never know what's going to happen to your song once you do it. And the, it's like saying something, and it comes back around to you, and you wish you hadn't. I don't feel that way about this song. But uh, it's simply called Dooley. You've been listening to four original songs by songwriter and musician Doug Dillard. We heard The Darling Boys, Doug's Tune, The Old Home Place, and Dooley. After this break, let's head over to the archives and see if Jeff Glover has found anything interesting this week. This is Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. Every week at this time, I head down to the vault to see what's been found recently in our vast archives that we keep down there in the dusty bins. So let's head down and see what Jeff Glover has found for us this week. Hey, Dave. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, good. What's going on down here? Oh, you know, a little cleaning. I found a corn dog in, in one of the cabinets in here. It looks like it's been here for about three years. Well, how was it? 
Not bad. <laughs> not bad. Needs mustard. <laughs> no, I, I found a rec- I, I don't know why, but I was just in the mood for some Scottish music today. Yeah. And so I was fishing around, and I run across a recording of Gene and Pam Simmons doing that classic Scottish tune, Scotland the Brave. Oh, man. You know, I'm trying to picture you in a kilt, and it's just not working. Oh, no, it wouldn't work. Yeah. There's no way. Um, yeah, Gene and Pam. Let me look at this. Gene, Pam. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, um, Dean Hinesley's on there too. Yeah, you know Gene and Pam and their and and Gene's husband Tommy, they were like the bulwark of the old time music here back in the early nineteen seventies. They they played music all the time. They were always down on the court square on Saturday night playing together, and they were ambassadors to the music here in Stone County. They played all over the state, singing the virtues of Mountain View and. Both Pam and Gene were terrific dulcimer players, and uh, it's, I'm really glad to hear them play this. And a Scottish tune is very fitting for this area because there's a lot of Scots-Irish that settled in this area. Lots of Scots-Irish, yeah. And they do such a great job on this tune. And, I, you know, they have been around. There, there is not a recording around here that doesn't have the name Simmons on it <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Would, I would, would you like to hear Pam and Gene and Tommy and Dean do Scotland the Brave? Aye, let's hear it, laddie. Aye, let's hear it. Oh, boy, what a great tune that is. You know, it's interesting about the dulcimer. The dulcimer has a lot of drone strings on it, and that the drone is what makes the bagpipe sound so interesting. And I I noticed while we were playing that, that how much the it sounded like bagpipes, really. It really does, because you've got the melody moving against those drones just like a bagpipe That's does. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks for coming down, Dave. You bet. I love it when you find stuff like that. Yeah, well, I guess I'll see you again next time. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. This week's guest, Rodney Dillard, is seen nearly every day with the Dillards somewhere in the world thanks to the still enormous popularity of the Andy Griffith Show reruns. Rodney continued to modernize and innovate the sound of bluegrass as he wrote and collaborated to write such now classic songs as The Darlin' Boys, Ebo Walker, and Dooley. Here's Rodney and his band with one of Rodney's great songs, There Is a Time. Well, um, I think we want to do one here that... Rodney and Mitch Jane uh, wrote most of the songs for the Andy Griffith Show. And of course, Rodney sang the lead on everything. Well, there was one song Andy liked so much that he used it on at least three different shows. He had their sister Charlene sing it. He sang it himself, sitting there on the porch. And then he had the Darlin' Boys sing it. And a lot of people have recorded this song. And uh, actually, Alan Jackson put it on his one and only bluegrass album a couple of years ago. 
and I'm sure you guys will recognize it from the show. It's called There Is a Time. <laughs> There's a time for love and laughter The days will pass like winter storms The winter winds will follow after There is love and love is warm There is a time for us to wonder When time is young and so are we The woods are greener old yonder The path is new, the world is free Fall. The woods are gray, the paths are old. The snow come when geese are calling. You need a fire against the cold. There is a time for us to wonder. When time is young and so are we. The woods are greener over yonder. The path is new, the world is free. Do your roaming in the springtime you find your love in the summer sun The frost will come and bring the harvest And you can sleep when day is done Life is like a river rolling With no regrets as it moves on Around the bend, a shining morning To greet the friends we thought we're gone There is a time for us to wonder When time is young and so are we The woods are greener, oh yeah The path is new, the world is free The path is new, the world is free There's a fun song I, 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 I love to do with these guys. Uh, and this is what this music is all about. It's joining in. It's, there is no, you know, there's no I, me, we, they. It's, uh, it's all of us together. And there's a song that I'd like to do with you all if you sing with it. We did it the first time on our first episode of the Andy Griffith Show in the jail with Andy when we uh, had the bean feed. And, uh, of course, they had raised money next week for... Uh, Replace the windows in the jail. <laughs> so we're going to do this song, and everybody's going to. Well, uh, salty Dog Blues, you all know that one, right? Okay, well, sit and let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your. I don't know what you say these days, but you know what to say. All right, here we go. Salty Dog Blues, and you know the songs, but here we go. Ready? <laughs> Great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. You got it. Well, if you're a cell, I know you run down so kind of without you. Yeah. Well, I'm 
I'm down in the white woods sitting on a log, figure on turn on a hog. Shot flow over in Mexico. Let me be your salty dog. Honey, let me be your salty dog. One more time. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Hey. So glad to see y'all. You know. I got to tell you, I, uh, when I came back from Hollywood uh, years ago, came back home, then I went to Branson and had a show up there at Silver Dollar City for years and bought this little house out by the lake, this pristine, beautiful, and these trees and squirrels and all those other little furry critters that run around. And uh, I woke up 30 years later and I had been mauled. There was a mall here and a mall there. And I'm all over there, and I thought, wait, what, what's going on here? And there's these guys out there in their suits and their, and their sextants, you know, the things they measure with their, the survey people and their clipboards. And I thought, okay, what's happening here? So we decided to write a song about it, and it's simply called... This is, uh, uh, there Goes the Neighborhood. <laughs> Pink flamingos in the outhouse when the wind blows. I'm starting to feel out of place. There goes a neighborhood. They don't have tires on their home. There goes a neighborhood. Don't want to give up with John. When they mowed all our yards, they found our old cars. There goes a neighborhood. phone in their hands got a pocket full of money lord it sure seems funny they're never in the sun but how they tan there goes a neighborhood they don't have tires on their home there goes a neighborhood don't want to keep up with joy when they mowed all, all their yards, yards they found our own car there goes a neighborhood Like me to Coca-Cola, it's Perrier and Granola. Pickle pig's feet is getting hard to find. There goes a neighborhood. They don't have tires on their home. There goes a neighborhood. Don't want to keep up with John. When they mowed all our yards, they found our old car. There goes a neighborhood. Neighborhood. I got to tell you, uh, how many of you in the audience are old enough to remember a uh, singer by the name of Bob Dylan? Yeah. Bob Dylan. 
I got to meet him. We got invited to the Newport Folk Festival when we first got out there and got signed with this agency. Got invited out there by mistake. And uh, I heard Dylan singing out there. And, you know, he was a great writer. He had a voice very much like a dog with his leg caught in a car door. <laughs> but, man, could he write? And I decided to do, an al- uh, do a song on one of our albums live almost on the Electra years ago. And this is my tribute to Mr. Bob Dylan. In fact, I did this once in New York, and he was sitting in the audience. So here we go. Well, I'm walking down the line. I'm a walking down the line. I'm a walking down the line, my feet will be a flying to tell about my troubled mind. I got a heavy head gal. I got a heavy head gal. I got a heavy head gal. She ain't feeling well, which is better only time will tell. Well, I'm walking down the line. I'm a walking down the line. I'm a walking down the line, my feet will be a flying to tell about my troubled mind. My true compote is getting worse. Well, I'm walking down the line. Walking down the line. I'm a walking down the line. My feet will be a flying to tell about my troubled mind. I'm an early riser, I didn't go to sleep last night. Well, I'm walking down the line. I'm a walking down the line. I'm a walking down the line. My feet will be a flying to tell about my troubled mind. Well, I'm walking down the line. Rodney Dillard and his band, having a little fun with Bob Dylan in a song called Walking Down the Line. He preceded that song with his original song, There Is a Time followed by a Mississippi John Hurt song, The Salty Dog Blues, and a couple of his original humorous songs, There Goes the Neighborhood and Walking Down the Line. When we come back after a short break, our guest host, Brooks Blevins, investigates the history of tourism in the entertainment mecca of the Ozarks, Branson, Missouri. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. This week, writer, professor, and historian Dr. Brooks Blevins continues his segment, Back in the Hills. Here's Brooks. There's a big powder tree down the road here from me, waggity down a dollar or two. Well, you go round the bend, and when you come back again, there's a jug full of good old bound No place in the Ozarks attracts more visitors than Branson, Missouri. You could make a good argument that no place in the region has been at the tourism game longer. Still, Modern Branson is a much different show than it was back in the 1960s and 70s, 
And it's not just because of the Branson Landing, the wineries, and the spas that bring people to town nowadays. The old hillbilly tone of yesteryear Branson barely vibrates now, and you may need a search party to find a homegrown act these days. As recently as the early 1980s, though, the Highway 76 strip boasted a string of music theaters featuring genuine Ozarkers, and handmade mountain crafts were all the rage. In the second of a three-part series, let's go back in the hills to the middle of the Branson story, the heyday of the hillbilly. The completion of Table Rock Dam on the White River just upstream from Branson in 1958 put an end to one of the region's oldest tourist draws, float fishing trips down the James Fork and the White River. But the large reservoir the dam created generated even more traffic, the station wagons bringing families into Shepherd of the Hills country to fish and play in the blue waters of the flooded river valley found their way to another of the region's oldest attractions, Marvel Cave, about 10 miles west of Branson and barely a stone's throw from the new lake. Chicago native Mary Hershon, owner of Marvel Cave, wanted to provide a distraction for the customers who spent hot afternoons standing in long lines waiting on their turn to tour the cave. So, in early 1960, she and sons Jack and Pete oversaw construction of a little make-believe pioneer town at the mouth of the cave. They named this distraction, which included a blacksmith shop and a general store, Silver Dollar City. In an age when the Western ruled screens big and small, it didn't take the Hershens long to realize that their faux pioneer town was more popular than the cave beneath it. Throughout the 60s, Silver Dollar City expanded, Stagecoach and water rides, roller coasters and a small train, craftspeople, musicians, actors. The park was already booming in 1969 when the cast and crew of the Beverly Hillbillies came to the city to film five episodes of the popular sitcom, an event that provided national publicity and inaugurated a period of furious expansion. By the time Uncle Jed and Ellie May arrived, the Highway 76 strip connecting Silver Dollar City to Branson had begun to take shape as a tourist draw. Just down the road from Silver Dollar City was one of the area's oldest attractions, Old Matt's Cabin, inspired by Harold Bell Wright's popular early 20th century novel, The Shepherd of the Hills. On a hillside behind the cabin, owner Mark Trimble built an amphitheater, and in 1960, the same year Silver Dollar City opened, began producing a stage show based on the plot of Wright's novel. By the late 70s, The Shepherd of the Hills was the most popular outdoor drama in the United States. But it was the band entertaining amphitheater patrons at intermission that launched the strip on a new trajectory and eventually made Branson the world's capital of live country music shows. Before the summer ended, the four Mabe brothers, along with a fifth member named Chick Allen, opened the Hillbilly Jamboree stage show in the basement of a downtown Branson community building. Borrowing their name from a group of vigilantes that once patrolled the area in the 1880s, the bald knobbers dressed in bib overalls adopted cornpone stage names and coaxed rhythm out of instruments like a jawbone called the jack assophone, a wash tub, and a washboard. And they weren't too bad on real instruments either. Growing crowds forced the show to relocate three times before the band opened their own theater on the 76th Strip in 1969. Just two years earlier, the Mountain Music Theater had opened nearby in a small metal building with a concrete floor and 363 second-hand folding chairs. The Mountain Music Theater was the creation of the Presley family, headed by Ozarks native Lloyd Presley, a former produce delivery man and fishing guide. The idea of a standalone music theater in 1967 seemed so far-fetched that Presley designed the building as a boat storage facility, just in case. The Presleys and the Bald Knobbers need not have worried. The instant success of both theaters inspired a steady stream of imitators in the 70s. The Foggy River Boys, the Plummer Family, Baba Links, the Ozark Hayride, the Wilkinson Brothers— by the early 80s, almost a dozen country music shows anchored the strip, all of them featuring mostly homegrown Ozarkers and following the blueprint established by the Bald Knobbers and the Presleys, a squeaky clean show featuring a mixture of bluegrass, contemporary country, and gospel with a dash of patriotism and an ample helping of hillbilly humor. In 1981, the Hee Haw Theater opened for business. Based on the syndicated country music TV show of the same name, it was the first live music show in Branson with roots outside of the Ozarks. 
The Hee Haw Theater didn't last long on the Strip, but it did introduce Hee Haw TV star Roy Clark to southwest Missouri, and Clark's decision to open his own theater two years later marked a turning point in the history of Branson. But the rest of that story will have to wait till next time. One of Roy Clark's co-stars on Hee Haw was a Kentuckian named Lewis Marshall Jones. We'll let the old banjo player, better known as Grandpa Jones, take us out with this number, recorded right here at the Ozark Folk Center. Well, the preacher rode by with his head hoisted high, said his wife, been down with the flu. And he thought that I ought just to sell him a quart of that good old Mountain Dew. My brother Bill's got a still on the hill where he runs off a gallon or two. The buzzards in the sky get so drunk they can't fly from smelling that good old Mountain Dew. Oh, they call it that old Mountain Dew. And them that refuse it are few. I'll shut up. Thank you, Brooks. I'd like to finish this week's show with a couple more tunes from the modern-day Dillards. Naturally, with a band that's been around as long as this one, the personnel have changed over the years. Rodney was accompanied on this show by multi-instrumentalist George Giddens, Gary Smith on upright bass, Corey Walker on guitar, and Beverly Cotton Dillard on clawhammer banjo. That's my that's my story with the Andy Griffith Show, and I tell you, I, I loved it all, and I loved all those people, and they were we were friends all these years. Uh, it wasn't like you just worked together and walked away. We stayed in touch with each other, and and just had uh, with George, and, and we'd work together occasionally in different places with each other. But it was great being a part of that show, and I'm just grateful that we had that opportunity. You know what? I'm going to do this song for you. It's, it's kind of a nostalgic thing. Let's see what you think. On the Andy Griffith Show, Engine Barney settle a debate. Goobers helping Gomer get a date. Barney finally found his bullet. Better watch out for your toes. I wish life was like the Andy Griffith Show. You know, Floyd the barber still goes on trimming hair. And you haven't heard the last of Ernest T. Bass, you know. On the Andy Griffith show, everyone wants the turkey and be bring. Oh, they all join in when the darlings pick and sing. He's digging worms, going fishing, don't you know? I wish life was like the Andy Griffith Show. When your family or your friends, love and laughter never end. That's the story of the Andy Griffith Show. I wish life was like the Andy Griffith Show. 
You know, I probably ought to wrap this thing up. I'm sorry I didn't get to Ebo Walker, but I'll come over to your house and sing it. <laughs> what I would like to do, this last song, and believe it or not, I was able to do this with Judy Garland on the show. And I don't even know if she picked up on it or what or if it got to her or anything, but it's an old gospel song called Somebody Touch Me. And as I look back on it, it was amazing that I had that opportunity, even it myself didn't know if that had any effect on Judy at all. She passed but, away shortly after yeah, that, Yes, she did. She? Uh, would you help me sing this song? Would you help us all? Would you? Well, with that enthusiasm, how can we lose? You can practice for tomorrow morning. Yeah, we'll practice for tomorrow morning. Okay, if somebody touch me. Uh, now it goes, while I was singing, somebody touch me. Let's try it one time. Let's see if we got it. I mean, here we go. This is your part. While I was singing, somebody touch me. Can we try that? While I was singing, somebody touched me. That's really good. <laughs> you sure you're not all here from Salt Lake City? <laughs> Salt Lake, Missouri. <laughs> Missouri, that's a good place. Somebody in the upper right-hand corner was singing a harmony part. I heard it. I think, I have confidence in you that I think we could get two-part harmony going here. So, I'm going to show you that harmony part if you'd like to try it. Like to, While I was singing, somebody touch me. Can we try that? While I was singing, somebody touch me. <laughs> That's really good. That's really nice. Let, let's put those parts together and sing it acapulco and see what it sounds like. <laughs> here we go. Ready? Let me get the key. While I was singing, Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. It really was. Guys, I love that. Okay, now the chorus is glory, Rodney. glory. Glo Rodney. What? These people What's sing great. You can tell some of them are in the choir. Yeah. They know there's more than two parts. What's the other part? A bass part. I can't, I don't. Know. Well, I know all these guys sing like girls, so I thought I would sing the bass part because my whole entire life I have wanted to be a bass singer in a gospel group take the microphone, sling it in the air, and go down on one knee. The only problem is I can't get up now. <laughs> but I can still sing it. <clears throat> it's real. It goes all over the place. It's really intricate. Are you really intricate. trying to do this? I'm, I am. <clears throat> I'm so embarrassed. While I was singing, somebody touch me. That was a great example of Tibetan throat singing I've ever heard. <laughs> Okay, let's try it. Here you go. Singers, bass singers, here we go. While I That was really good. Yep. Now what the guys like to try it. Rodney. Okay. Here we go. Let, let, let me hear it again. That was really pretty. Let me hear it. While I Y'all go on the road with me. I'd have fun. That's good. <laughs> All right. I'll kick it off. Somebody does. And somebody touch Debbie me. Folks, Ford. thank you for spending your time with us. Uh, God bless you. And, and uh, have a great, great rest of the weekend. Okay?
The Dillards, knocking out a fine old fiddle tune with twin fiddles called Roanoke, one of Rodney's original songs, I Wish Life Was Like the Andy Griffith Show, and a sing-along from the Stanley Brothers, Somebody Touched Me. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Remember, you can always drop us a line on our Facebook page, or learn more about us than you ever wanted to know at Ozark Highland Radio's website. This is your host, Dave Smith. I'll see you next week. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from Arkansas State Parks, a division of the Arkansas Department of Parks, Heritage, and Tourism, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. On the web at ArkansasStateParks.com. The Committee of 100 proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974 and by Stone Bank with roots in Mountain View, Arkansas. Stone Bank is a proud supporter of heritage musicians and small towns across America with government-guaranteed loans for farmers, entrepreneurs, and communities. More information available at StoneBank.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar.